Good morning, everyone. Pleasure to be with you all here today. Um, as per the introduction, my background really is combining academia and applied um, work in technology. Uh, so I'm a professor of advanced technology, particularly specialising in blockchain and AI. So a nice kind of integration of what we've had so far today and obviously applied practice um, in, in the technology field. My particular passion, I'm doing a lot of work in the UN at the moment. I've just come back from a week uh, speaking there with a new assembly um, and also as part of the SDG week, is how we can really harness the power of emergent technology for wider social impact. Um, and looking at the schedule here over the last um, yesterday and today, obviously there's a fantastic focus on the technology. And what I really wanted to do was give more of a focus on the applied nature of that and how we can do great business, but also do really good business that has wider societal benefit too. That's really my passion. And also to give some balance to what we sometimes see in the media that kind of focuses sometimes on the darker side of technology to kind of bring that back a little bit and say what we can actually achieve by applying that and working together collaboratively. So yes, so first of all, I want to talk about trust. I think the figure there is quite stark. A 17-year all-time low, and that's not just in corporate sectors and, and you know, the big banks, for example. That is across the globe, even in charity sectors and social em enterprise. And things like blockchain, with the ability to embed trust, can make a real difference here. So I wanted to kind of bring the context around this trust issue and what we need to do to resolve that. Um, classic examples there don't really need much explanation, but really big names in very different fields all are suffering from this lack of trust. And times are changing. I work a lot with young people. I've actually got my own foundation called Aspirational Futures that I'll be coming back to a little bit later on in the talk. And I passionately care about how we get more people involved in this, how we bring different sectors together, and particularly around young people. The stats there are around millennials in particular, there's a real contagion of interest here about doing work that's got shared value. People don't want to rock up for their job um, and not be doing more than that. They want something they're doing to have real meaning, real purpose, and be able to go away happy. That their values outside of their working practice match what they're doing within it. Uh, we need to create more opportunities for that. And again, that is very cross-sectoral in approach. And all the projects I'm advising on and my new CEO role is all about bringing these things together and harnessing it. And I think yeah, the stats there really speak for themselves. Also in terms of contact, we've got massive, messy problems across the world. Again, affecting every nature we have, really, from the social side of things to environmental challenges to climate change to education, very much harnessed by the framework of the social development goals that have been brought together by the UN. Figures here speak for themselves. 1.5 million people can't prove their identity. And that doesn't just have implications for banking and being able to access a bank account um, and institutions. It has massive implications for education as well. I think that, that, that number, that visual... It says everything. It's a massive problem. If we don't have education as a building blocks for life, everything we're doing with technology will not fulfill its full potential. Again, um, in terms of challenges, we've got issues with power. The electricity one there, 85% of the world's population does not have full access that is affordable, reliable, or clean. There's 15% there. It's a staggering number. And again, around food supply, I spent a lot of time out in Mexico and also in Brazil looking at food supply chains, looking at ethical food supply chain and what's happening. People are not able to earn their full capacity for what they're growing. So we've got problems from the bottom line where farmers are growing crops, then getting to the end producer where things have been taken away, uh, where the money has been lost. Um, and when trees, for example, have been destroyed in the process of growing. So Oud is a fantastic example. I've spent time in the MENA region in particular, and we don't always see so much of this in the US and the UK, but it's a substance that has amazing qualities. So it comes from the Aguila tree, and at the moment, most of the time, to actually create that reaction, you have to basically have an infection in the bark for, to produce this particular oil. It can be used for cancer care, some amazing results from that. Um, and there's a, a stack of research papers I can share that are really showing the benefits there. But also it's used for things like perfumes and well-being, and, and actually the, the wood itself is used for decoration. Um, but at the moment, that's an illegal trade of um, the whole industry's 10 to $20 billion a year. At the moment, about 50% is illegal. People are learning a fraction of what they're worth at the, at the bottom line. And so if you look at that all the way along the supply chain, can't see a better application of blockchain. Um, and also, as it says there, food fraud, again, another massive problem, and people are losing out at every stage. 
So I mentioned earlier about the Sustainable Development Goals, something incredibly close to my heart, and I'm a co-chair of something called Frontier 3000 that's coming out of the UN. It's encouraging more inclusion and diversity, but also scaling up social impact projects across the world, hence what I was doing there the other week. Um, and as part of that, I've got a particular focus around supply chains, looking at transparency, um, looking at uh, things around trade and how we can make that right for all parties that are involved, and also looking at things like that, making things truly accountable and traceable. Again, blockchain, but also an in integration with other technologies is a fantastic way to do that at every stage across the line. Now onto technology. We have problems um, across the world in certain areas one of which is inclusion and diversity. If we're creating technology, particularly the AI we were talking about just then, we need to have truly diverse teams. And that's not just about gender, that's about all different types of diversity. And we, we need to do more in that area. That's particularly prevalent around AI development and also areas such as blockchain and cybersecurity. We need to look at areas like interoperability, interoperability if I can even say that word, interoperability, sorry. Um, and also things around silo thinking. We don't have enough joined up approach. That's a classic across the world, to be honest with you. We always have this issue where people do not share. There's avoidance, there's negation of sharing. It's what part of my, my master's degree was about that particular area. Um, and I'm all about creating this ethos of collaboration. Uh, also, persistent infrastructure challenges. I think the developing world is a great example of that. So there's a project I was involved in around literacy. And what we did was we harnessed and repurposed the power of older phones. So you can use the power of the cloud there to create this, this wonderful thing, really, of, of mentoring in families. You have great problems sometimes where mums and dads might not have reading skills. And that has that, that problem later on down the line about how then do you help people to learn to read and write. And there can be a lot of um, resistance to change just because it's quite a difficult thing to talk about. And that, and that can be very, very hard. But if you can use the power of an old phone, you don't even need the internet. You can actually make a massive difference there. So a lot of what I do as well is not just about the really advanced stuff. It's also about repurposing older technology as well. Um, and also, as I said at the beginning, I'm all about um, sustainable environmental and economic impact. If we're talking about blockchain, we have to then acknowledge things like mining costs. We can't just sweep that under the carpet. Um, and also things obviously around scalability and performance. But with some of the projects I'm working on and some of the newer kind of flavors of blockchain, for want of a better word, are actually dealing with that head on. So that is not a panacea problem. There are significant developments. I'm more than happy to talk about some of those offline after the talk as well. And just for anybody who's not aware of them, that was just a quick flash picture there of the SDGs. The project I'm working on most closely at the moment is called SACS, which is called the Sustainable Asset Exchange. And that's all around, for example, ethical minerals supply, ethical diamonds, oud, um, and also bamboo as a replacement for plastic, and how you can trade that fairly and use blockchain technology, but also along things like RFID and other forms of technology at every stage of the supply chain. And it's all about this next slide creating a triple bottom line. So for me, that's sustainable development in the middle, or another word of putting this is shared value. We can bring economic, social, and environmental benefits together. It doesn't have to be an either or. Sometimes I find that we talk about one thing or the other. We never look enough about how we can integrate them. And that's what I passionately believe in. And we are seeing some early benefits as well. There's research from Stanford, for example, that's looked at a number of early blockchain projects. Um, and again, I'm more than happy to share the research on that. And I've also got my own original research in there as part of my PhD. Um, so we've got a lot of impact there showing at different scales where we're actually seeing tangible benefits. I've also built my own measure because one of the things you always find with social impact, how do you measure it? Um, you know, even when you go for funding bids, it's very difficult. It can't just be anecdotal or experience led. We need some quantitative measures as well. So again, if anybody's interested in that side of things and how you harness the emergent technology and the impact and draw them together, more than happy to share that with you offline. But we are starting to see this coming through. Three-way opportunity for change. So moving on to the enabling side now in, in depth. So for me, this is all about technology convergence. The two talks we've had here this morning, blockchain and AI, for me, bringing those things together has got the biggest potential overall. The projects I'm working on tend to have that. A previous one was one in the uh, precision medicine field, and that was bringing together blockchain to secure DNA transfer alongside AI machine learning to deep delve into looking at pattern recognition. So things like population disease management. Um, and, and within that, we've got things coming through, the, you know, blockchain as a service. But also science and technology coming together, that convergence there, again, massive catalyst for change and driving social impact. So this is a supply chain that is very close to heart. So I've just come back from a week or so in Thailand and Malaysia 
literally you'll see some photos of this later on, but this is taking you for every stage, because I do find making this tangible is so important. It needs to be accessible. And in groups like this, where we've got a great depth of knowledge on the technical side of things, that's fantastic. But sometimes when you're going broader than that, we need to make this like the phone in your pocket. Things like blockchain, AI, machine learning, there's so much hype around them, but there's so much ambiguity as well. It, it's not always accessible. It feels like it's something out there unless you're very, very within the field. So again, um, and the Wu website I've got, and the book, et cetera, it's all about tangible use cases across every different sector. So there's something that you can look at there and take it away, and you feel like you can understand it. So this is one I'm doing at the moment, as you can see there, literally from the nursery to the end consumer. We've got technology at every stage. It's also a great example of the fact that you can transition. It doesn't have to be a brand new bleeding edge, like where are we going to use blockchain, where, where's that a natural fit? Actually, there's a lot of businesses where you can integrate this as a natural evolution. It doesn't have to be something that's taking away jobs either. A bit like the talk just now, it can be taking away some of the more mundane features and allowing much more quality time to do work that's more fulfilling and satisfying. And this also gives an opportunity as well to evolve our business models. So as an example here, um, as part of the profit that's created from this particular organization, some of that is put back, at least 1%, for example, from certain things that's happened recently. Um, and this is a wonderful example. I absolutely love this. This is bamboo bicycles. I think bamboo, I think there's going to be so much coming up with bamboo in the next few months. I've, I've, there's more I want to share on this. But let's just say it's a, a sustainable replacement for plastic, but also in conjunction with things like 3D printing, modular homes, putting the furniture into that. If you look at things like the refugee crisis and also homelessness, I'm directly involved in projects there where we're going to be using some of this bamboo in really exciting ways. And this is a three-way business model. You can create the really high-spec bikes, sell them overseas and make, you know, earn money from that, plough that back in to the local community. So we've got hectares of land in Kenya as an example, helping kids connect the 10 kilometres to go to school, and then really ploughing that back into community education. So that, I yeah, very close to heart, and it really, really excites me. Uh, and this is kind of, kind of veering to what I was saying just now. We need to make the application of advanced technology accessible to all and make it feel like this is something that's valuable and relevant to our everyday life, not something out here just for the few. We need to bring it back in. So what I do online, I've got a new tech column that starts this week as well that's very blockchain focused and stuff I do in Forbes as well. But it's all about making this tangible, real world relevant to everyone, not just one or two and particularly about looking at really innovative ways how we can bring profit and purpose together, not being a juxtaposition, how we can really create shared value. And to do that as well, bringing together research, high-tech um, uh, people in, in the field like we've got here, but also civil society, NGOs, the UN. We need to have this cross-fertilization of ideas rather than the events that are focused on one or the other. It's really about this intersection. Um, and again, addressing non-advanced tech issues. So in the case of blockchain, things around working with telephone companies. I've got a background with, with Orange and E and companies like that. And again, we're working with partnerships there to solve some of those. Because we've got you can't have the best ideas in the world and the most advanced forms of technology if we haven't got the basic infrastructure right. We won't get to that point of acceleration. And again, as I said, the collaborative ecosystems of change. Those are some pictures with me <laughs> um, at the bottom there. So that was in Thailand. And again, I do think sometimes a picture says a thousand words. And the heart of technology, the human side of technology, um, the keynotes I do increasingly at the moment, I'm really trying to stress that area because, again, I don't think it's talked about enough. We need to really be evocative. We need to get people engaged. We want people to be part of this. Again, you, you know, the things around STEM and STEAM drop off at schools, so if you've got more excitement and engagement about what is possible, not what tech will just take away, I think we can really start to change the conversation there. And on that note, I'm just going to um, give a little note to three pillars of change, as I call that. So this is aspirational futures. So this is I've been doing this for kind of six to seven years now in different projects in different countries, particularly specializing in developing areas um, such as Mexico, Brazil, um, and also, but also back in, in other areas as well. In many UK cities, as an example, you can have a real difference in open access to opportunity. It can be chalk and cheese, one end of a city to another. I've particularly done a lot of work in Monterrey, an incredible, incredible city, the richest city in Mexico, but again, full of juxtaposition. At one side, travel 20 minutes and you probably look like you're going back 60 years. You've gone from you know, the, the heart of modern civilization to uh, you know, horse, and, horse and cart and guard of Seville. Big bodies were being dumped on the streets because of the problems around drug abuse. Um, and you've got that real cycle of people being trapped in, in difficult areas. And we went out there, helped build a new school, 
filled it with like kind of robotics projects, Raspberry Pi, all that kind of stuff, but also things like arts and, and uh, you know, jewelry making, things like that, so people can be truly creative. Because if we can't have um, the most creative minds of the future building emergent tech, if we're not sparking that creativity in the first place, we need arts and tech to be hand in hand. So that's what Aspirational Future is about, scaling um, access to opportunity. So again, there's free to access courses that I've built around blockchain AI and other forms of, of technology as well that are free for people to use, kind of like the MOOC style of things, but open to all. Um, and a range of tech for good projects that we're scaling up across the globe. Um, so if anybody wants to get involved in that, just give me a shout because I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm incredibly passionate about it. And it's all about getting that scaled up ecosystem and bringing everybody together to make that happen. Some of the people that have been helping on that and are getting involved are on this little sheet there. So again, as, as it kind of shows there, this is very cross-sectoral. Got big tech companies involved, but also leading educational providers. Front, um, sorry, frontier tech um, organizations from the N uh, UN, um, but also things that are specialists in certain areas, opening up access to labs, for example. Well, we're doing some fantastic work in that that I'm speaking about in Dubai next week. Um, and they're sometimes, you know, expect the unexpected. Uh, there are places I've been, and if you, if you challenge your assumptions and you go in fresh, um, full of enthusiasm, full of that ethos of sharing and coming together, I've been absolutely amazed about what you can achieve and what you can contribute. So my vision is all about bringing as many people on board as that as, as, as possible, basically. And that's what I want to take the opportunity for on the platform today. And so finally, kind of bringing that to a close, if you're interested more about what I do in terms of the social media side of things, again, I love taking conversations on and offline and bringing these things together. So I'm very active pretty much everywhere on social media, everything by my name, because I really believe in authenticity. So it's at Sally Eves. Um, I've also got a TEDx talk that's all around technology um, for good. So tech for good is kind of my mantra, really. So it's all about the scaling up of that. So feel free to have a look at that. But yeah, my message is that we need to all work together to really scale up change, to share knowledge that's accurate and accessible and tangible for everybody, um, and, to, and to do that. So that, that's my kind of clarion call, really. And if anybody wants to talk to me about more detail about that, I'll be around all day, and I'm more than happy to look at ways to work together. Thank you. Thank you.